students. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Okay. Uh, can you please type in the uh, chat box whether you can hear me? Just say yes. Uh, I can can hear me. Okay. Can hear you, teacher. Okay. So that I can see that. Uh, so that I know that I'm. I have everything is okay. Can you please do that? Okay. Whoever is on. Uh, in this class now okay i'm combining class today because uh i've missed lessons and i have because of uh, work in school okay so can you please type here uh whether you can hear me number one okay yes okay good good thank you very much okay i see some response now okay now for now can you please type in your name bracket your class so that your class rep class rep of every class are like Dietrich, uh and then denise and also uh Kun Yi Ching can uh, take attendance. Okay. So Pastor, you just uh watch out for the yeah, watch out for the the the, the you know the comments there. Look at just just take note of the names. Okay, so as okay, all right. Okay, good. Okay, just write your names there with your class, okay, so that they don't mix up, huh? Okay. So I have. I hope you understood the lesson, the previous one, uh, the one on um, the stimulus and response, and then the um, voluntary and involuntary control, and also after that we have this uh, human nervous system. So I have seen some of your uh, you've done the quizzes. Okay, I see some of you are not able to do it. Uh. you have told me that you cannot open it. So maybe I will have to look into the matter. I think most of you can uh, because I think uh, some of you have already done the quizzes. Okay. If any problem, you telegram me. Uh, any problem, I will check my telegram later, my message later. Okay. Please do write your names down and class chat, please uh, scroll up and down just to let me help me to check the attendance. Okay. After the class, please let me know. After the class, please let me know uh, who is absent. That's all. Okay. So I actually, I, I, I am going to go to the next part. So we're going to learn about this, okay, about the five, the sensory organs, okay. We have seen the human nervous system and also the different types of voluntary and involuntary action. Now we're going to look at the five types of sensory organs, okay. We're going to start with the eye today, okay, the eye, the human eye. So I'm going to share the screen and let me know afterwards whether you're able to uh, see or not, huh? okay. Share screen. Eh? Okay, so I'm going to share. Wait one minute. Okay. Now this is a page from your textbook. Okay, so you have a look at your textbook. If you have a textbook with you, it'll be good. Okay, so this is a page from your textbook. After the stimulus and response or a new movement of a system. Now it's one point two. Okay, I hope you have a textbook with you. Okay, and I know that you also have your workbook, right? Today I was handling this in school. So it was a very busy day. I, I think our parents have got this workbook for you. So after every lesson, I want you to do the work inside your book. Okay. So for the time being, since I already started uh, human nervous system, that means you can do the page one and page two. You can do that already. Okay. Then uh, page three, uh, we will skip first. Okay. Because it's a little bit difficult. Maybe I need to discuss with you. Then after today's lesson, uh, uh, we can start to do page four and five. Okay, page four and five. So it's one, two, four, and five. All right, okay. All right, so let's start with this lesson. Now, look, our eyes are our, our sense. We have five sensory organs in our body. Okay, now look at the five types of senses. Okay, we have the sense of sight. Okay, we call it 视觉. Okay, it's to help you to see. Okay, help you to see, we need the eyes. So the eyes is called the sensory organ. So please take note now, whether which is which, uh, because you're looking at the sense is called sight, all right? The sense is called sight, and then the organ is called eyes. All right, okay, not the other way around. Uh. Okay, next, we have hearing, okay, ting jue. is the, to hear, all right? Is to make, to have sound. You need, your, your what you need to detect is the sound. So your sensory organ is the ears, uh, right? Then smell, okay, siujue, to smell the, you know, the, the, the kind of uh, aroma, okay, that you can, you can detect from the air. Then the organ is called the nose, all right? Now, next is weijue, 
taste when you eat something okay whether it is uh sweet tian or sour swan or maybe it is bitter ku uh, what's a uh we call it xian, salty okay so you have actually five tastes uh. later you see the taste it is actually uh the the organ the organ that help you to taste is called the tongue yeah t-o-n-g-u-e so the spelling most of the students cannot spell correctly yeah is t-o-n-g-u-e okay and lastly we have one more uh sense we call uh chujue. that means is to touch you can feel whether it is hot or cold whether it is hard or soft okay you can feel whether it's pressure when it's smooth or whether it's coarse you can have feel that so this is actually because of your skin so your skin is a sensory organ all right okay so you have to memorize here the five types of uh, senses we have and also the five types of sensory organ all right okay so now if you already um, type in your name and everything so you can actually use this chat box to uh, ask your questions okay because you can't uh, talk to me directly but I think you can type, okay? You just type something simple uh, if you want to ask question. Or you can ask me in Telegram later. All right, okay. Now, so here I'm going to today talk about the eye, all right, the eye. Now, this is the outside outside uh, feature. This is what you see from the outside, all right? So you see the white part of the eye, okay? So the white part of the white part is called sclera, actually. Okay, this is called sclera. And then... And the black part of the eye actually is dark brown, uh, okay? We don't say black eye, uh, right? It's dark brown. Then you can see there's a small, uh, actually there's a little hole there. Like a tong, little xiao xiao de tong, okay? That like tong is called pupil. So pupil has got two meanings. Pupil actually, one, one pupil is called uh, 同学啦, or uh, means 学生, or student, okay? So pupil, the word pupil has got two meanings. One is called student. The other one is actually the, the, the opening in the eye there. This is to allow the light to go inside. So that you can see clearly all right so this is what you can see from outside you can see the sclera the bison the white part a white part of the eye is called sclera then you have the this part here which is colored now nah. some people have color right especially uh the uh, girl uh right the, the the caucasian you call it uh, putih, uh they have blue color they have green color okay they have other colors so usually for asian all right uh, Huarana, or maybe malays or indians we will have dark brown eyes. Actually, it's dark brown, right? So this is called iris, okay, iris. And then pupil is the, actually the hole there. Okay, so these are the parts here. I'm not going to go through here. After later on, you will read this because I want to show you a CD, okay? It's a very interesting CD to show you the parts of the eye, all right? Okay, so let's, I will stop sharing. I'll share the other one now, all right? So I will mm, share screen again. So let me know if you can see. See uh, this one. Let me, okay. Um, all right. Okay. One minute. Okay. Are you able to hear it? Wait, uh, let me try again because I think it's a bit slow. All right. Okay, can you hear this uh, video? Can you type yes or no before I continue? Okay, 可以告诉我吗? 你们听到吗? 如果听到我就继续, 如果不听到我就check一下. Can someone just type in? 听到吗? 我再来, 我再, I continue. Uh. Okay, can you hear? Oh, cannot hear. Uh. Okay, you can't hear this. Oh, not able to hear. Okay, maybe I need to do this. All right. Can you try again? Oh, Pai Xiao Zhen. Click on check answer to see the answer. Okay, now my I will just uh explain. Okay, let me just okay, it's okay, but you can hear me, right? I'm just gonna explain now. Look at this boy. This boy is at the 
uh, at the park bench here. And then actually there is a mosquito, all right, mosquito flying around. And then he hit the, the mosquito bite. Okay, never mind. You can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear my voice, Sejai? Now you listen to my voice. No need to listen to the video. Can you hear my voice? Okay, one minute. Huh? Okay, let me type here. Can you hear my voice? Okay, you can hear my voice. Okay, good. You can hear my voice is good enough because I can explain what is in the video. All right, okay, good. Now, let me continue here. Okay. All right, good. Okay, Lu Eileen. Okay, I see all these new names. Okay, I don't really know you yet, but I hope to know you very soon. I think we can have more interactions. Okay, now this boy is sitting at the park bench. Now, and here you can see that the person, yeah, the, these are the five senses. Okay, the tongue, your, your sensory organs, you have your tongue, all right, your ear, the eye, the nose, and the skin. Just like I mentioned to you, right, we have five these sensory organs. Now, this boy was sitting at the park bench and suddenly a mosquito came. Okay, now see uh, what happens, uh, mosquito came. Uh. Watch animation. Look at the picture. Okay, look at the picture. The sound of the mosquito, the sound, the sound mosquito, zzz, sound. And then uh, here is this, this is actually a, not mosquito, it's a bee. Uh. <laughs> it's actually a bee. And the bee sting. The bee sting the boy, okay? Sting already. Can you tell me what are the organs that actually... Uh, the students cannot hear me. The students, oh, sorry, the students cannot hear the video. The students cannot hear the video. Okay, so can you click here, the answer? Can you type it? You can type more than one. Huh? Which are the organs that help the boy that he used just now? The bee, he can hear the bee. Then the bee came over and then sting him and then he said, ow, like that. And then can you type inside there, what are the sensory organs that he used? Why the students cannot hear me? Can you help me? The audio works differently on the thing. Oh, okay. So time we help now. Okay. Can you type in here? Okay, just type in. Choose out of the five. There will be more than one answer, actually. Okay. So think the boy was sitting on the bench. He hear the bee come, and then the bee stung him, and then he shouted, "Ouch!" Okay. Can you just type? What are the choose out of the five here? What are the sensory organs? that he used that he used okay when i see any answer i'm going to click here all right let me check and see any answer here okay have any answer anyone to answer anything okay skin all right okay i can hear i can see something already skin ear eye ear skin ear eye eye skin all right, ear, eye, and skin. Ear, eye, and skin. Ear, eye, and skin. Okay, don't have tongue, don't have nose. Huh? Okay, let me check the answer. Correct. Can I, correct. Yes, you are right. Okay, so let's look at the structure of the eye. After. Okay, now we should look at the eye. Huh? Okay, look here. Now, here, remember, I told you there's a pupil there. There's a small opening in the here. This is to allow the light to come into the eye. All right. So the pupil is a round opening. Can you see this? Look at the eyeball. Uh, this is the pupil. Now I'm going to increase the brightness. Okay. Now if I increase the brightness, see what's going to happen to the pupil. Let me increase the brightness. Okay. See the size? Look at the size of the pupil. When we increase the, the size of the pupil, when I increase the light, become more and more brighter, you can see that the eye, the pupil becomes smaller. Okay. And then what about the other way around? If the person doesn't have enough light, let's say go into a very dark room. Okay. Let's look at what happens to the size of the pupil. Okay. I'm going to decrease this. Huh? All right. Now look at the this one. What happened to the pupil, the size of the pupil? You can see the pupil becomes larger. Yes, correct. I need uh, to uh, Yes, decrease. Yes, decrease and increase because of 
the amount of light that enters the eye okay so when the person cannot get enough light that means it's too dark you need to have more light enter the eye so the pupil must become bigger right the pupil we call dilate or become bigger so the more light can enter the eye so the person can see brighter and then on the other hand if it's too bright okay tai guang liao, okay tai guang liao, like this let's say too bright nah, see? the eye is like very painful right when you have too much light entering your eyes too bright your eyes may be painful so you see this one will become smaller okay the eyeball i mean the eyeball sorry the pupil will become smaller so that you will limit less light can go into the eye so it will not hurt your eye so much okay so you can see the size of pupil can increase and decrease based on the amount of sunlight or light that enters the eye okay right okay so let's continue okay now let's look at the eye so the human eye is the organ so where is the eye it is located in the eye socket of the skull the skull is the whole head here the the bone of the head okay right so here let's see what is inside the eye now from the outside you can see certain parts right you will have tears because you make uh there's tear, yen lei, right? Yen lei is actually the tears because there's a gland inside here that produces the liquid. All right. You feel when you're sad, when you have dust enter the eye, you find that the water will come out from your eye. Okay. It will banjera. So it's actually to clean your eye. All right. So we will show you what is the, the gland there, right? Ah, eyelid is to close to prevent the dust from entering the eye and also when it's too bright blinking when you blink your eyes you will actually produce uh the tears yes eyelashes and eyebrows eyelashes and eyebrows will stop the dust and sweat from entering our eyes okay so when you have the what you call the water from the, your sweat right? it will drip down here and then if you don't have this eyebrow it will enter straight into your eye so when it goes to your eyebrow here it will it will flow to the side okay so that's what is useful lah, the eyebrow it's not for beautiful lah, to make you beautiful it's actually got a function one to prevent the uh, the the what you call sweat from entering to your eye okay then you have tear glands will keep the cornea tear glands is the one that produces uh your tears it will keep the cornea cornea is the layer on, on the front side of your eye to make it wet so that also to clear it when you have dust particles. So it's like water to wash, okay? Wash your eye, okay? Okay, let's go to the next one. So, and also your tears can also come out because of your emotion. When you are angry, when you are, uh, when you are angry, when you are sad, okay? You also, your eye, your, it's called, tears will also come out yen lei right this is the glands that produces the liquid okay let's go to the next one now let's see okay there are three layers on the eyeball let's open <laughs> let's take out the eyeball lah. okay take out the eyeball three layers okay i stop here now these are three important names you need to remember okay the whole eyeball because the eyeball is the whole thing ah, right it has three layers so we start from the outside. The outside is called the sclera. Remember we see the word sclera before? It is actually the white part that we see, okay? From the front, you will see the white part, okay? It's actually sclera from the behind, right? It's connected to the front here. So you can see the white part is actually, you can sometimes, sometimes people say it's a little bit bluish, actually it's whitish, bluish, okay? So that is called sclera. Then the second layer is called choroid, okay? Choroid. This is black color one. Uh, it has blood vessels. Okay, there's blood inside here. You shake one. So this is the layer that has blood. It provides oxygen and nutrient to the cells inside your eye. So this one has a lot of cells inside there actually. Okay, and the, the third part which is important is called the retina. This is the part which actually help you to see. So when the light enter the eyeball, right, it enters and it touches these special cells on the retina. It is going to uh trigger your cells here to produce the impulse and then it will send to the brain so your brain can detect can uh, interpret okay what do you see there all right let's continue okay 
outermost layer is the sclera. Now you can see here, this is sclera. You can see as you see the whole eyeball, this blue part or we call it white or blue part layer is actually the sclera, all right? It is, okay, let's look some words here. Tough, tough means none, it's not so, uh, not so thin. It's actually, it's tough, that means quite, okay? It's not so easy to tear. Okay, means rosak, right? Opaque, opaque means uh, put home means so light cannot go through. Okay, it is doesn't allow the light through, it's called opaque. It's a tissue, right, that protects the eye. So the sclera is to protect the eye. Okay, right. And also it's a place for the muscles to, to attach. You see, all these are muscles that connect to your eye to attach your eyeball so that your eyeball can move up move down when your muscles right left and right right you can roll your eyes around you can look up look down left and right it's actually the muscle pulling your eyeball all right so this is important of a sclera protects the eyeball and also provides a place to attach the muscle right for your eyeball okay let's go on ah now you see the front part, uh, the back part here is the sclera, right? This is the sclera. And then when it comes to the front part here, it's actually become transparent. Tapian toming. Transparent is toming, or in BM we call journey. So it can allow a uh, lucina. So the what the eye or call it the light can enter. Right? So it becomes clear in the front here and it's called cornea. So this cornea is an important layer. This is actually uh, you know, some people they can actually donate the cornea to people who are already have uh, maybe damage in the eye. So when they donate, actually people who are dead, uh, they actually can can sign a letter saying that they want to con donate their cornea when they are dead, so they can help other people to see, right? Because some people have uh, damaged eyes, okay, cornea. So if you donate it, uh, of course the person has to be dead, lah. Uh, nobody's going to donate the cornea if they're alive because they will become blind, okay? So the cornea can be donated to people to help them see, okay? So this cornea is transparent, right, and there's no blood vessel, okay? 没有血管的 all right okay no blood vessels in cornea now what's the function of cornea now you see the eye and so the yellow line you see here is actually the lines the eye uh, sorry the light the light light enters the eye and then it will be bent it will be bent okay we call it refracted lah, by this layer called cornea and also it refracted also in the lens and also in the this liquid inside here okay later we will see so the function here is to bend the light or we call it refract the light as it enters the eye, okay? And then at the back here is the optic nerve. This is attached to the back of the eye. So when the light enters the eye and then it hits the last layer called retina, it will produce the impulse. The retina produce the impulse and then the electricity will be produced and then this impulse is going to be generated and passed on to this. This is called the optic nerve. The optic nerve will send it to the brain so the brain can detect what is what you are seeing, okay, and give meaning to what you see. Uh, this optic nerve, right? So this is attached here to the back of the eye. Okay, let's go on. Now, second layer is called the choroid, okay, and it's usually colored black. Look at the blood vessels here. So in front of the eye, it forms the part, like I said just now earlier, we call iris. This is the part that the other people of different races will have different color. Like I say, uh, orang putih, uh, the, the Guailoa, they will have blue color, right? Blue color and also uh, maybe uh, what they call uh, green. Yes, blue color and green. Okay, this is the part they call iris. So at the front is called iris. This one, you see the brown color, brown color part here? This is the iris. And it's at the back is actually your choroid. It's connected to the choroid at the back there. Okay. Let's carry on. Huh? So this is the colored part called iris. It controls the amount of light entering the eye. So the remember just like I said earlier, the pupil, the size of the pupil become bigger, smaller. It's actually the iris that is contracting and relaxing. Relaxing. Okay. So this part actually contract and relax to make the the the, the uh, what we call the pupil become bigger or smaller to allow the correct amount of light to enter the eye. Okay, so it's controlled, controlled, that that is called the iris. Okay, and it's colored in different people. So for Asians, it's always dark brown. Okay, so unfortunately, we don't have blue eyes uh, 
or green eyes. We always have dark brown, the Asian people. Okay, so it changes the size of the pupil. The round opening in the center of the iris is called the pupil. Okay, the pupil allows light to enter the eye. The size of the pupil determines the light that enters. Okay, just now you see the picture. Now, in dim light, when the light is very little, you see that the pupil become big. The pupil become big, we call dilate. D-I-L-A-T-E. Dilate means become bigger so that more light can enter. So if it's a very dark place, the person just enter a dark room, uh, the pupil automatically, uh, th this is what we call, remember, involuntary action. Uh, we learned in our previous lesson, right? Correct? Involuntary action is the action that you cannot control. You cannot even stop it from happening. Automatically, the eye will become bigger when you enter a room that is very dark. Okay, and now automatically when you come up in from into the sunlight, which is very bright, right? And then automatically this uh, pupil will become smaller. Okay, it will contract. So this is automatic, it's involuntary control. Now bright light, see what happens? It becomes smaller. You see that, right? Mm. Okay, maybe I make it bigger. Okay, never mind. It's still the same, sorry. Okay, now, so you see here, you see here, the next to the iris, I will call ciliary muscle. Now, ciliary muscle is this, uh, these are the muscles that control the shape of the lens. So the lens is the part that the light enters and you want to focus the light onto the retina. Okay, if you look at your textbook or you look at your workbook, right, this ciliary muscle is actually muscle, it's actually to, con to pull the lens to become thinner or to become thicker. So how to focus actually, how to focus the light so that we can see things sharp, right? Very sharp, blur, blur. So actually what happens is when you want to see things that are far or things that are near, so the light enters the, uh, the lens, the lens will be changed shape. It will be either thin or become thick, depending on looking at near object or far object, okay? And how to control it is with this ciliary muscle. They control the shape of the lens so either become very thin or become thicker, okay? Become thicker means like this. Ah. It become thin is like this. Ah. Now, this means especially when you see something very far. You see object that is very far, it become thin. When you see object that is nearer, it become thick. The, the shape of the, uh, the what you call the lens, okay? Let's carry on. Ah. So you adjust yourself to make us see correctly all the time, all right? Okay, so the pupil can become... Bigger, smaller, because because of the because of the sun, uh, the the amount of light. Okay, next one, ah. Uh. Now third layer, third layer is called the retina. This is the first the the layer that makes the person able to see. Now there are two important spots here. Look, remember the name, ah. Uh. Yellow spot. Yellow spot is just directly behind the this one. Just directly in the pathway of this uh, pupil here, the light, okay, enter here. Now this light, a yellow spot is very sensitive. You have a lot of these special cells called receptor at the yellow spot, okay? And they are responsible to produce the impulse and send it to the brain. Now, on the other hand, there's one place called the blind spot, okay? Now blind means it's no good, all right? Blind means you cannot see. On this place, it's called the blind spot. Actually, there are no receptors. So happen here, because it's the place where it connect to the optic nerve. So there are no nerve uh, receptors here, and it's actually uh, if the light or the image fall into here, the person cannot see. Okay, later on there will be we can do some experiment uh, to actually you test it yourself. Everybody has a blind spot. Okay, so yellow spot is sensitive area, but blind spot is not sensitive to light. The person cannot see if the image falls there. Okay, let's carry on. Ah, so here explain again is. Blind spot is where the optic nerve leaves the eye. There are no light sensitive cells here. When light falls here, you cannot be detected and you cannot see the object. Okay? The yellow spot is the most sensitive part of the retina where the light sensitive cells are packed most closely together. It's the most. the receptor at this place is the most receptor. Okay. Now let's look inside. Inside. Internal. You have fluids here. There's a lot of liquid inside. Now, lens is very important. is to help you to focus the light. 
okay so you see this yellow color lines these are the light rays coming from the outside okay and it will bend okay when it enters a uh, material of different density it will become it will bend and you can see that it will focus onto a spot here this is the yellow spot okay which have a lot of these sensitive uh, cells uh, sensitive to light okay so this is how the light rays will be focused okay now let me go on uh. mm. so lens looks here look it is chain shape again what controls it this is the ciliary muscle okay so it changes so accommodation is the the ability for our eye to actually change to change big uh, to become thicker or thinner okay depending on the things that we see sometimes we see we look at the boat it's a near object okay counting the tongsi the eye the eyelids become thicker but suddenly you see your uh, book already then you want to see someone very uh, uh, across the room you want to see maybe toimian. you want to see across the road that's something far right so suddenly when you change your vision uh, your change your 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 direct of vision you go to see that side you find that your actually your lens will become thinner okay, okay? automatic you don't need to do any it's a, actually it's a reflex action okay it is actually involuntary you cannot control now look at the liquid here inside here there is a liquid right this part uh behind the cornea there's a little uh, there's liquid here we call aqueous humor so this is a little bit uh not so thick lah, all right this is called aqueous humor what is the function it helps to fill the space so that this part you cannot it won't we won't be able to collapse because you have liquid there to fill the space okay so to fill the space here and also help to bend the light or we call refract the light when the light enter right it will actually bend the light okay let's carry on huh? okay aqueous humor okay girls you can actually type use the chat box here to type your uh questions or something that you want to interact with me because you are not able to talk to me directly you can actually uh just type there okay i'll be, I'm, I'll, I'll be able to see it okay so this is aqueous humor it gives the front of the eye gives the front of the eye the form the shape at the back here now look at the back here there's another type of liquid but it's thicker it's like jelly right jelly like agar agar like that so it's thicker and it's actually also what is the function what is the use of it it actually fill up the space all right so that if you don't have this like it's going to be flat your eyeball will not have the round shape okay because it's everything will be flat there's no nothing to fill up the space here and everything will nian chi lai all things will stick together so you need to have something to make sure the layers are you know not touching each other and you have the shape there so this is called vitreous humor okay vitreous humor helps to keep the shape of the eyeball to make sure it's rounded support the lens all right so it's going to support the lens so the lens is always there and keeps the retina in place so the retina will not fall out okay this is the retina the third layer here is the retina inside most layer okay so that is the vitreous humor okay so this uh, helps to keep the shape of the eyeball right okay let's go on to the next part now so okay now let's do a few uh to sh the parts of the eye in a function now now the question will come out they give you the function okay let's do and look at the click the correct part okay let's let's look at the question the jelly like substance that keeps the shape of the eyeball and helps bend the light okay can someone type the answer okay i said jelly like okay like liquid jelly like one so you can type here is it the lens the retina choroid yellow spot blind spot vitreous humor aqueous humor iris pupil cornea sclera you've seen all of it okay can someone just type maybe okay type the answer here so i can see just one question we just do a few lah right we go on to the next part ah okay i see answer stella g chi you have the answer vitreous humor okay let's click and see what happens okay check answer yes correct yes you're right okay that is right okay patricia poon correct jia tong you're right okay we trust you mark ah, okay next second question let's do one more a crystalline structure located just behind the iris just behind the iris here right and focus light onto the retina 
So it, actually, the job is to focus the light onto the retina. Okay, can you type the answer for this one? Can you type the answer for this one? Ah, okay. I am waiting for the answer. Uh, Damia, Damia, your vitreous is most correct, but uh, your spelling is less one R. Uh, okay, your spelling mistake here. Damia, you don't forget your R. V I T R E O U S. So the spelling is a little bit wrong there. Okay, so this one, the second one, islands. Yeah, someone say cornea, someone say islands. Okay, three of you say islands, so I pick the islands answer. Uh, someone say cornea. Okay, never mind. Let me choose islands. See, correct or not? Uh? Okay, let me choose where's islands. Ah, okay, let's check. Cornea. Okay, let's see lah. If it's not islands, it must be cornea lah. Okay, check islands. Check answer. Correct. Correct. It's islands. Yes. Okay. So now, I... Okay, so with this part... Can you get me the book? Okay, so now... Okay, I won't have time to do all. So remember now, this is your workbook, right? So workbook here, you can actually... After learning this, you please fill up page number, page four. All right, you have a book today already, right? It's all fresh, huh? fresh from the school. Huh? And later on, you please do page five. You do all the match, match the I and the function. And you look at the textbook as well. The answer is all there. Okay? So it's no, uh, it's everyone can do it actually. It's not difficult. Your answer is in the textbook. You just need to take it, open it, and read it. After that, you can do already. Okay? So I want this to be completed. Okay? This is your work for after the lesson. Okay, let me continue a little bit more. How does the light, uh, how do we see actually? What is the, the, the mechanism of sight? Okay, let's look at that. Uh, I, I will not go through this all because this take a long time. Your exercise will be in your book. Okay, let's see how we see. Okay, how we see. Uh. Okay, now we can see very well in the daytime because there is light. Okay, but why we cannot do the same at night? So daytime, you see so bright because there's light. Uh, look at night. Look at night, you see? It's so dark. Okay, what is lacking? Why at night we cannot see so uh, well? Okay, the reason is because there is no what? There is no what? Okay, at daytime, we have a lot of what? Nighttime, not enough what? Uh, what is the word there? Can you just type there? Can you just type the word there. What is it that is not enough of at night? Okay, don't say not enough money. Yeah? Okay, <laughs> okay, daytime, very bright. Very bright means got a lot of what? And then nighttime, you say dark. That means don't have enough what? Okay. So can I just see your response? Daytime, very uh, bright because a lot of light. Yes, correct. Correct, yeah. Jun Yang, Evelyn, Elisa, uh, Jia Tong, Shu, Shui, Hui, uh, Shui Hui. Yes, correct. You're all right. Yes, it's because of light. Nah. So how do we see an object? So this eyeball, right, looking at the cats, looking at the cats. Now, you must have light. Definitely, you must have light. If there's no light, even if the cat is in front of you, uh, in a dark room, uh, you cannot see one. All right? So why, why do, are you able to see when there's light? You see the light? The light coming from the, the cat enters. The first place is actually the cornea. All right? The cornea will help to uh, bend the light. We call it refract, bend the light. Then the next one will be this liquid here. Okay? Don't forget the name aqueous humor after cornea you have aqueous humor after aqueous humor the light carries on the journey pass through the lens okay so the lens job is actually to focus okay focus ah <laughs> Tang, hello yes thanks for coming okay so the light will actually focus uh, the, the sorry the the lens will focus the light and you know when it focus means that the light uh, will come together that's the meaning of focus okay uh 集中. 华语叫做集中，那个光线会集中在一个点。Okay, it will come to one point. We call it focus. So you see, after they enter the uh, the the what they call the um, the lens, it will come nearer and nearer. Okay, the easiest is what light rays uh, will come nearer and nearer until you reach one single point. Okay, you see ah. Uh? Okay, so enter ah. Uh, okay, so don't forget the pupil here got lens here, right? Now you focus it means it go to one point. Do you see? Uh, it's going to come to one light, one dot uh, here. See, it's going to focus and the image will be on the retina. All right. And what happens at the retina? 
what happens to the retina all right and the retina once the retina once the light hits the retina this retina will be called stimulated stimulated means to see you like a like a young like a squang sien a hit to see out a tart to see how like a retina so the cells here we call receptor will know what to do now what's it going to do it's going to produce electricity okay we call impulse so the electricity will be transmitted okay which song uh, means transfer transfer uh, transfer into this uh nerve nerve uh, it's uh, actually not only one uh, there are many many nerves here we call it the optic nerve when you see the word optic means the eyes so this optic nerve will transfer all these messages we call impulse messages to the brain and the brain collect all the information and it's going to interpret oh what is it i'm looking at okay it will actually give meaning interpret means to give meaning to the thing that to whatever is received okay so let's see the the video again now yeah. yeah continue right you see the light so it's going to carry to the brain the brain will interpret and see oh this is a cat i'm looking at okay and then then of course you can do the core the appropriate response or maybe you want to uh pick up the cat or maybe you want to walk towards the cat or maybe you want to shoo the cat away uh, that is your response uh, all right so the image goes into your eye i mean your, your, the light goes into your eye and then you have the 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 image form then after that the receptor at the retina will produce the impulse and then after that he will go through all the way to the brain the brain will uh, gather the information and then it will just process it's like a processing center okay process uh, what is it what is it what am i supposed to do now all right so after that it will send message out and to your hand or your leg maybe you want to kick the cat uh, or maybe you want to shoot the cat away uh, that is your response uh? okay so this is what happens the light rays enter the eye okay uh, so we cannot see in well in the dark is because you don't have enough light when there's no light enter the eye here the retina cannot be stimulated so the retina is only stimulated by light okay so if it has the light it so if don't have information i don't have the light that the the re receptor will don't do anything all right just like nothing to stimulate the receptor don't do anything okay so when it don't do anything that means uh it will not produce any in another impulse uh? no impulse that means you cannot see anything uh? okay there's like no message sent okay <laughs> okay now let's continue right now there's no light that means you cannot see all right you cannot see that's the reason why we cannot see when there's no light because receptor is sensitive uh, sorry the retina is sensitive to light okay it only answer to light okay you don't understand any other language the retina cells can only understand light only so your guang xian you can it will produce the impulse okay let's carry on ah now you see mm. first of all okay maybe a bit small for you lah maybe you cannot see ah uh. maybe i can do for you ah uh. uh, no light no see correct <laughs> yes okay pantang correct no light no see yeah okay first light rays fall into the cornea correct okay fall into the cornea then after that remember what's the next part after fall to the cornea you go to the liquid right remember what's this liquid in front here is the aqueous humor okay let me see ah uh, yes got cornea right don't forget there's a cornea okay let me try first i put here first all right then after the cornea there it goes through the lens okay pupil first got me or your pupil ah uh, lens 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 goes to the ah uh, light passes through the lens all right passes through the lens after that it passes through this jelly like thing here okay ah uh, this is the vitreous humor the jelly like thing is called the vitreous humor after that it the light falls on the retina okay uh image for three ah falls onto the retina then when it falls on the retina then the special cells the retina cells will be triggered or sent uh, stimulated stimulated it will do something it actually produce the impulse okay so light is converted ah uh, another uh, message uh, the message is actually called impulse then the impulse will be sent to the brain by how how to send to the brain you need the optic nerve ah okay uh change the layout uh, one time i'm not this is the maximum unfortunately oh yeah okay i know what i mean okay thanks thanks for the information one time 
I can change the layout so they, they can only see. It. But unfortunately, it's still the same size. Huh? I, I just disappear only. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, so happened because of the computer. Uh, I'm not computer. This uh, software, this is the CD. Uh, it's only this is the maximum size. Okay, so after it go to the brain, now the optic nerve can convert, uh, carries message to the brain. Then after that, the brain will convert it into understandable language. Means that now the brain understand what is seeing. Okay, that can answer. Okay, that's your answer. All right, that's your answer. Correct. Correct. Second one, correct. So I can appear again. All right, correct. Oh, sorry, sorry. Not this one. Ah, okay. So everything is correct here. All right, the sequence must be correct. You must make sure you remember how the light passes through. Okay, pass through which part of the 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 eyeball. All right. Okay. So we're finished with this. Ah, uh, this is called the visual mechanism. Okay. Let's go back to the textbook. I think the next part is just questions only. Huh? Okay. No need. Huh? We don't need to do this. I want you to go back to your textbook. There's one part that the CD doesn't have. I want to go through the textbook. All right. The CD doesn't have this. So I will share again my uh, slide to reshare. I will share the other one, which is the textbook. Right now, so all right, this is what you're seeing your textbook. Can I now? This one is uh, what I want you to do. You miss, make sure you do the workbook, you fill up the answers based on all this. This your textbook has got all the answers. Okay, the only thing is you don't, mustn't be lazy. Lah. You have to pick up the book, and you it's no way you can you cannot do. You just read and understand. Okay, and please do it. Ah, uh, okay, right next. Let me go on to the next part. Now, this part just now the CD doesn't have. This is called now when the light just now we said now when the light when the light hits the retina. Okay, sorry, ah, uh, now here. Can you see this? This is the next few uh next few pages one. The light. look at the candle. The candle has the light coming from the candle. Now it's going to enter which part first? The first part. Don't forget is the cornea. Cornea then enters the cornea. After that, passes through the liquid called aqueous humor. It helps to focus the light. And refract the light. Then it enters the lens. The lens is the main part. Okay, 最重要的部分啊, 这个是要focus啊, it's actually the lens the job. The job of the lens is to focus. The other part, the cornea and the vitreous, uh, sorry, aqueous is to help on it. 它帮助一点点. But the actual thing that is actually focusing is the lens. Okay, after that, the light, you see the light and becoming nearer and nearer and nearer, it goes to a point we call focus. All right. Focus, then you will you get this image here. Now, once the light touches the retina, it will be triggered or stimulated to produce impulse, and this impulse will be uh, sent to this optic nerve to send to the brain. Okay. Now, what happens at the retina? Okay. So actually, retina there are two types of cells. Okay. Let's look here. All right. There are two types of cell. Let me maybe make it bigger. All right. Oh no, make it small. Uh -huh. I can see here. So actually, there are two types of cell. Look here, the, the two types of cell are called photoreceptor. Photoreceptor means they are the receptor that is sensitive to light. Photo actually means light. Photo is not actually. Yeah. Photo actually means light. When you see the word photosynthesis, that means making food using light. That is the meaning. Photo is not photosynthesis. Photo is actually light. Okay, so photoreceptor are those special cells that are sensitive to light. Actually, there are two types. Okay, look at the names. It's called rod cell and uh, another one is cone cell. Okay, rod cell and cone cell. Okay, uh, maybe I can minimize, I can uh, make myself disappear. Uh, also, uh, same, uh, not different. Uh, okay, so after that, now, why are, why are there two? Okay, why are there two? Okay, first of all, let's look at the rod cell. Rod cell is actually sensitive to different light intensities. That means whether it's a little bit of light or a lot of light is sensitive to that. It can detect light whether it's a little or a lot. Different intensity that means So it's sensitive to this sensitive. That means a little bit of light it can detect. A lot of light also can detect. So it helps you to see in the dark actually. When you see things in the dark, all right, uh, you cannot see color. Okay, you notice like, if you enter a dark room, you may have a You haven't switched on the light now. Anything that is colored in your room, you cannot see, correct? Because it's not enough light, uh, it, not enough light to, to uh, stimulate your cone cell. Cone cell is help you to see the light one, the color, sorry, color. 
if it's a rod cell, it just helps you to see on it. Can detect a little bit of light or a lot of light, all right, dark or bright, but it doesn't help you to see uh, the color, all right? So bright, uh, the rod cell is to detect the different densities of uh, of light, uh, different light intensities, okay? Uh, if they're not sensitive to the colors, so the color doesn't doesn't uh, trigger these rod cells. Okay, now let's look at cone cell. Cone cell, on the other hand, fan e, uh, is more sensitive to actually the color. Okay, and then we have three uh, basic colors. Uh, we call it primary colors. The primary colors is the colors in the light. Now, don't for, don't remember your the lesson on Pernitikan Seni. Uh. I know a lot of people think, oh, Pernitikan Seni uh, tell you that the three basic colors of light is red, uh, blue and yellow, isn't it? Okay, red. No, sorry, sorry. Red, blue. Ah, uh, yes, red, blue, and yellow. They say it's the the primary color. Okay, or one asas. But actually, that is pigment coloring, coloring. But actually, it talk about light. Uh, the basic color for light. Light means a light that come from the sun. Okay, light. Ah, uh, is actually red, green, and uh blue. Okay, red, green, and blue is the primary colors or the basic colors so cone cells are sensitive to colors of the light under bright condition only when there's enough light you can see color okay that is important when it is very dark no matter how colorful the thing is okay how bright the color is if it's not enough light you can actually cannot see the color right okay so cone cells are sensitive to the colors of the light under bright condition enough light only you can see actually the color okay there are three different types of cone cell three different types huh? why are there three, three different types because they are sensitive to three different colors they are sensitive to red light green light and blue light okay so these are the three uh basic colors of the light actually okay don't uh just forget about the light that your uh, you, the color that you learn in your sunny yeah this is actually the basic color in context science is actually the basic color is actually your red green and blue rgb just remember rgb not R, not rbt yeah all right rgb all right okay now so how to label see this is your retina uh yeah this is this is the light coming okay so the light coming from the left hand side so that means this is your retina layer here uh, sorry this whole thing retina is the more holder uh, this is fang da, already magnified so this layer is a retina so once it hits here it's going to trigger your this one the, this one is called the uh the rod cell see the yellow yellow one this is your oh sorry here this is your rod cell all right and the cone cell the rod cell is the long one the blue here label blue color here's the rod cell and here is the cone cell the cone cell is here the shape is like cone one. okay so it's a different different uh different shape of the cell all right okay so uh, i've covered what i wanted to let you know so if you look back at your textbook all right i have already covered uh here outer structure first of all don't forget your five senses sight hearing smell taste and touch and the five organs and then the eye the structure from the outside okay you must know how to label where's your sclera iris and the pupil Next of all, uh, next you must remember all this function. Okay, I don't want to go through all that because you have this with you. You have to slowly read by yourself and do your workbook. Okay, that is very important. Then after that, I also talk about the color. Right? How to see the color is because you have these uh, cone cells. All right, and also you have these rod cells. Right? Rod cell is for sensitive to intensity, different intensity of light. For cone cell is sensitive to uh, the three colors, which is red, green, and blue. And also we talk about this one, right? Mechanism of sight. Now this is found on the next few pages actually. All right. Later on, I'm going to talk about the ear, then the nose and all that. Now this is the, from this page here. Okay. So, ah, all right. So this is uh, the end of the lesson. All right. So I hope you do your homework. So anything you can contact me through the telegram, then I can uh, uh, respond from there. Lah, okay. So feel free to ask me questions. So later, the class rep, please uh, tell me, uh, the F, uh, three of you are the class reps, yeah, please let me know uh, who are the ones who couldn't join in today and did not are uh, able to join the lesson. But don't worry, if you didn't join the lesson, okay, you can click on the same link, you will see the recording. And the recording is always there, okay? You can even give this video to your friend. You can share the link to your friends and other classes to help them maybe get a better understanding, lah, 
and also uh, please tell them to help to subscribe to my channel all right so that i get more subscribers and help me to overcome uh, to actually pass the challenge i have a challenge uh, to actually get 1000 subscribers so anyway never mind uh you just do your part and make sure you watch the video i mean now you watch already lah. okay you just click the subscribe and also maybe the bell button anytime i go on live you'll be notified okay that i have a class that you can join anytime all right okay right all right thank you very much for joining the class hope to see you on thursday night all right because i will be having another replacement class okay all right so okay so bye bye then all right i will see you soon okay bye